access to the kingdom. Jesus said to himself, he said, those that come to it, they must press into it. Get my second point so I can get on out of here. The Holy Ghost gives you power to press, though. Because guess what? We wouldn't press on our own. It's the Holy Ghost that gives us the power to press in the kingdom things. You would not have the power to press unless you had the Holy Ghost. Luke 24 is when I read it last week. That's something we built upon what we did last week. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued. Somebody say endued. With power. Somebody say power. From on high. So God said, I want you to be endured with power. You stay here, you get some power. Don't go out and preach to anybody, you get some power. Don't go out and witness to anybody, you get some power. You cannot be a witness without power. And the Holy Ghost is less about equipping you to fight the enemy. I want y'all to hear this. It is less about equipping you to fight the enemy than it is about empowering you to press into the person that God wants you to be. We spend too much time worrying about the devil. I'm gonna be ready. Now I'm gonna preach to myself if I have to, but it's the truth right there. We spend too much time worrying about the devil. The devil can't stop anything inside your life. But you can. The devil cannot stop any move of God, but you can. The devil can't stop none of your blessings, but you can. And the Holy Ghost is not about fighting him. Oh, y'all better hear this. Because the Bible says that in Jesus' name the demons tremble. So you don't need the Holy Ghost to fight the devil. Y'all better hear this. If I'm out the word, you let me know. I don't need the Holy Ghost to fight the devil. I just need the name. I need the authority behind that name. I need the Holy Ghost to deal with me. Oh, because I'm stronger than the devil. Because the devil couldn't keep you from being saved, could he? So who's stronger? We think the devil's so strong. We think he's big and bad. He's this and that. He don't keep you from doing what you want to do. If you want to do what you're going to do, it ain't you? Oh, you gotta remember, y'all look at me like I'm crazy because we built them up to be so high. You can resist them when you want to resist them. When you wanted to get saved, the devil didn't want you to get saved, we couldn't stop it, could he? So how powerful is he really? Y'all better hear me. See, see, the, the, the Holy Ghost is the unction inside of you that refuses to allow you to be comfortable with what you are when God is calling you to move on to greater things. Before you receive the Holy Ghost, you may have desired the things of God and you may have known that God wanted better from you, but without that power, somebody say power, you could not overcome your flesh to be better than what you were. But when the Holy Ghost gets inside of you and you submit to his work, it is equips you to press into greater. It equips me to go to greater things. The Holy Ghost won't leave you alone. It won't leave you alone. It won't let you just sit there and do your thing and not say anything to it. It's going to always work on you. It is the Spirit of God in you that tells you that you are better than what you have settled for. Oh, I'm going to preach to somebody inside of here. The Holy Ghost tells you, no, nah, you're better than this. I know you're selling for this. I know you just want to go ahead and do this and, and, and be cool with, with everything. But you are better than this. It says, I want you to be better, be, 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 be greater. It, it, it tells you that you can do a lot more than what you're doing. I'm going to preach to me right here, y'all. You can be a lot more than what you're doing. It convicts you of your shortcomings. It convicts you of your slowfulness sometimes, doesn't it? it? It doesn't let you off the hook. We let you off the hook. Don't we? Uh, I, it, it was the, the craziest thing I saw on Facebook, but it's so true. They said, black people will give any kind of excuse to get on the phone. Let me call you back. I'm going to turn off the light off inside the other room. Let me call you back. I got to go close the door in the other room. We just want to get off the phone. You know what we do? We let you off the hook. Nobody said, well, you can turn the, 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 the lights down the phone now. You, 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 you can go close the door and stay on the phone, but we know what you're doing, don't we? That's your signal that I want to get off the phone. Now, who's all guilty of that besides me? That's your signal you want to get off the phone. Let, 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 me, let me go turn to 10. I got to get off the phone. We've we, been we some crazy stuff. But we let people off the hook. But guess what? The Holy Ghost does not do that. When you tell, we tell, we tell God, well, Lord, I really want to pray tonight, but I don't feel good. God said, no, no, I know you're going to still go to work. I know you're going to still watch TV. Lord, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. And the TV watches us go to sleep, doesn't it? Am I being real? We don't go to sleep on the word like that, do we? We don't turn the word and say, I'm going to listen to the word and I fall asleep. Ah, shot out. If you already hear me inside of here. Then we don't do that kind of stuff. But, but we make every excuse. And the Holy Ghost is going to say, look, I'm going to let you do what you want to do. But I'm not going to give you that excuse. 
pressing, y'all. This is pressing. Isn't that true? It convicts you of those things. It doesn't tell you that you're okay. It pushes you to press. Because even if you tell pastor, you tell sister, you tell brother what's going on, and they say, okay, no problem, that's fine. Guess what? The Holy Ghost knows that you lied. Amen. Amen. Just being real in the house. The Holy Ghost knows that, but it doesn't only push you to press. It empowers you to press. It is the strength to do what you want to do, even when you don't feel like you have the power to do it. Lord, I desire to be closer to you. I need the Holy Ghost to step inside of me and make me be what you want me to be, God. Oh, y'all been hear it. That's when I submit myself to the power and I become possessed by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So it's not me that does it. Oh, I love what Jesus said there. It's not me that does it, but it's the Father working inside of me. Whenever I do anything good, it's not Daniel doing it. It's the Holy Ghost working inside of me. Because if Daniel had his way, oh, y'all better hear this. And if you had your way, it wouldn't get done. But there's something about when you begin to submit yourself to a power that is bigger than you. Ah, you see, that is the power of the Holy Ghost. It is the power to press and to overcome. If you are not pressing in some area of your life, I want you to hear this one more time. If you are not pressing in some area of your life, I question your submission to the Holy Ghost. I'm not questioning if you're not saved. I'm not saying you don't have the Holy Ghost. But I'm saying if you're not pressing in some area, I question your submission. I question how submitted you are to the Holy Ghost. Because just when you think that you are doing okay, it finds another area in your life that needs to be pressed. Lord, I thought I got this taken care of on this side. I'm doing better on this side. The Holy Ghost will find another area in your life that needs to be pressed. It finds a piece of you that you held back when God began to work on you. Because God only works on that which we allow Him to work on. He does not go into places that you don't open the door for. Oh, y'all better hear this. So he said, those places, the last time you came to the altar and you want to be made over, you kept some stuff back that you quit put in your mind. I'm not going to change that right now. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, and so he said, he's always pushing. He's knocking on that door. Oh, you better hear it. The Bible says, when he knocks, open your heart, open the door, and not in the day of provocation. He said, don't provoke me. Open the door when I'm knocking, because I want to get to that place in your life. Oh, y'all better hear this. And, so, and what separates, y'all better hear this, what separates the field from the fake. There's field people and there's fake people. What separates the field from the fake is that the field can't ignore the spirit and go on like everything's cool. I'm going to preach that out very quick. That, that when people, you get people who, be so, who are so high and mighty and they just run around on this cloud for God and they, all this and all that. The field, they don't ignore God so they always know I got something I got to work on. I really wish I could just tell you how great a God, greater I am in God, how strong I am in God. But they're so humble because they realize I got some more work I got to do. Y'all ain't heard me. That's the way it is. The field have to obey the spirit and press even when they don't feel like it. There are too many people who are at ease in Zion. You just sitting back. They are good where they are. That's where pride and denial begin to seep in. They want to look good for the world but not submit to the spirit. So if I got to shout the right way, if I can speak in tongues the right way, if I can jerk the right way, if I can quicken the right way, you think everything's good inside of my life but on the inside I'm ignoring what God says, you better press until you get to the point where you can hug that sister that you ain't hugged in five months, y'all better get this, when you can begin to hug that brother you ain't spoke to in five months say so I'm not going to look beyond those things because you can speak in tongues so well because you can shout so well because you look so good in front of people I'm not going to begin to ignore that and not look at the, the fact that you are messed up on the inside and you got some pressing to do. Someone say, I got some pressing to do. I got some pressing to do inside of my life. He's not just going to give me the good award and say, well, Daniel, good job on this, but I'm not going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ignore that. No, he's not going to ignore that. He said, Daniel, I need you to work on this too. Am I being real in the house? This is what God does. And when you get to a point where you ignore that, that's when pride comes in. That's when denial. Anybody been, ever met somebody in denial? just in denial. They think they're doing good because sometimes we've convinced people around us that we got everything all right. That we're A-OK. -okay, and we convince people and we're now walking in denial. Amen. I'm being real in the house. Denial. See, but the field are always humble because they realize that they may be good but they still have some pressing to do. They still have some oil that needs to be squeezed from them. That's why the pressing 
the people who are filled, they stay on the altar. I'm going to tell you why. Because if you're filled, you're not filled to stay full. What do you feel to do? Be poured out. Go back and read Paul. Paul says, I am now ready to be offered. And when he says to be offered, he is going to make an allusion to the Old Testament way of offering out a drink offering. To pour it out. That when you are filled, it's your job now to be poured out. That's why you got to stay in prayer. That's why you got to begin to start staying inside the upper realms of heaven when you begin to, to begin to pray to God. You must stay inside the, what they call the inner courts and the holy of holies when you pray to God. Because you're not there so I can begin to brag on who I am and what I can do. I'm there because I need to be filled again. I need to be filled over and over. And if you guys don't believe that, listen to what we just had Sunday afternoon. The woman of God said, we have new mercies. We have new glory. The Bible says that we go from glory to what? Glory. Oh, y'all ain't heard me. So we cannot stay on what we did last year and what happened last time. We just had a great conference. I'm not just going to sit back and say we had a good conference last year. I'm trying to make it better next year. Because I want to go to glory to glory. Ah, so that's what God is doing. That's why he's there on the altar. They don't have time to worry about anybody else and what they're doing or what they're getting away with. They stay on the altar because they got some pressing to do. They are fasting because they got some pressing to do. They are seeking the face of God in consecration because they have some pressing to do. Don't ever get satisfied. Don't ever get so satisfied that you stop pressing. Don't ever stop pressing that. Don't ever stop get to a point where, God, I'm good. I cannot get any higher. I'm fine. I'm good at this point. No, I don't care what people say about me. I got some pressing to do. Yeah, yeah. And I preach to myself if I have to inside of here. But I'm telling the truth about Elder Baker. Elder Baker has some pressing that he has to do. There's some areas inside of my life that God wants to separate the olive from the oil inside of my life. And I have some pressing to do. My last point, I'm getting on out of here. The high call requires pressing. Last scripture, Philippians 3 and 14. It says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I love that scripture. Philippians 3 is like my manifesto. I say, man, it, it's the most humbling scripture and the most awesome chapter, chapter in the Bible. The whole Philippians 3 is just awesome. And that's what he says. He said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Paul was one of the greatest apostles that we ever had. He wrote or is credited with, and, uh, with inspiring the majority of the New Testament. If you read the New Testament, you read Paul. You read knowledge about all that is Paul. Yet he understood the necessity of pressing. He understood that what God expected out of him could not be achieved by a life sitting on the sidelines. It could not be fulfilled through gifting alone. That Paul was gifted as a preacher. He was gifted with the Holy Ghost. But he understood that beyond my gifting, I got to press. And the mark of the prize of the high call of God in Christ Jesus could only be reached through pressing. God is calling for his people to a higher level. But his people must understand that pressing is a prerequisite for the prize. You don't get the prize if you don't press. Uh, uh, given the context of the scripture, we can assume that the lower callings do not require pressing. There are some things you can come to this altar and God will bless you with just at the altar. Can I be real? There are some things that God, you can, that God will you just come up here and get prayed for and God will get a bless you right there. It takes no pressing on your part. But the high call, somebody say the high call. The high call is achieved when you go back to your seat and you are changed. It is achieved when you go back to your home and you're more disciplined. That's the high call. We are stuck on lower callings. We want somebody to give us a word. Someone to give us some encouragement. And we all need encouragement. We all need a word. That's great. But on top of that, it's also something that you got to go do. Ah, oh, Am I being real? I don't want to just preach about my mother Ellen, but, but you know, the, the testimony was great. That the man of God said, you praying for somebody. You believe in God for somebody. But guess what? That came after she'd been fasting for him. It wasn't like they just said it and it's going to happen. She was already fasting, amen? Already fasting for that man of God. That was the pressing that God says, I'm going to do it if you begin to press. 
Given that context, we know they're lower, they're lower calling. They don't call, they don't call for any pressing. It seems that they are easy to attain, but if you move to the high call, if you want to move to the high call, you got to be willing to press. And there are some things that we have to either press into or press out of to reach the high call of God in Christ Jesus. Now I got about five or six, about five to seven minutes left, so I want to tell you about some things. And this is what God put in my heart. This is what God put in my heart. We got to press into some stuff. And the first thing God said was to press into holiness. To press into holiness. And what is he talking about? It, re it, it requires pressing to be different. Because we are in the world, but we are commanded not to be of the world. Right? You see, and, and if we were to be honest, now y'all can take the halos off right now. If we were to be honest, it is very tempting to be of the world. Ain't it? It is very tempting to just fall into the crowd and not be noticed and just be like everybody else. Now, y'all don't want to say amen to me. I like Apostle Peter say, say amen to me. Say amen to me. Y'all don't want to say amen to me. But the truth is very tempting if we were honest to be of the world. If it's the truth of the matter, very few people want to be obscure or strange or different. I don't want to be that. I want to be like everybody else. I want people always looking at me and, and, and watching what I do. Have you ever been to your job and they say something dirty or say a bad joke or something like that and they watch to see if you're going to laugh? Have they ever said something and you know it was something simple or something bad and they look at you to see what you're going to say about it? Am I being real? That's because you're different. And it's not always easy. We, we, we are called to do this and we are to please God. We need to understand that we're not supposed to just make up our own holiness. Oh, I'm going to preach it right now. I don't make up my own holiness. I don't say, well, you know, sometimes people have come out of certain things and they're cool with that. Now they make it about you. I'm, I'm not making up my own holiness. God brings the holiness into my life. Because there's something that God will do inside of me that he won't do in you. Can I go through that? Holiness that is ordained by God comes from obedience to his word and to his voice. That means if you're going to be serious about holiness, there are some things, hear this very carefully, there's something that he will forbid you to do or require you to do that, he, that is not contained inside the Bible. Amen. Am, I, am I getting too deep right now for you guys? There's something that God's going to say, yeah, you, it, it's not in the Bible, but you still can't do it. Amen. Am I being real? Because there's something that we came out of, y'all better hear me inside of here, that God said, you go back to it, you go so close to it, you be right back in the same stuff over again. Amen. Everybody can't do everything because everybody don't come from everything. Amen. I'm just being real. Everybody don't come from everything. Everybody, sometimes things that they come from, you may be delivered. God bless you, delivered. That don't mean I'm going to go right back to the same things all, all the time, though. Because just because I'm delivered does not mean I cannot still be tempted by it. Ah, oh, y'all better hear this. All things may be lawful to you, but all things may not be expedient for you. Uh, and, 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 and that takes some pressing. When God requires things from you that he does not require from your sister or your brother, you got to win the press when that happens. When, when God say, no, 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 they can do it, you just can't. Yes, we don't preach this inside the word of God, do it. We don't preach this. That's what Paul is saying. That that's something that other, other sins can do that I can't do. Amen. Can I be real with you? Other sins testimony, he's not been to the club, right? He ain't been to no club. Let us see go out there, he ain't go party, he ain't never been to Q Delta weekend, he ain't never been to Kappa Week, he never done any of those things. When well, we were out there partying and, and, and we were not here to testify, thank God, because we really always bring it up. But we we not we not here to testify about that. But you know, when we had the time we were all at memories, and, and, and yeah, Lord have I'm on the, on the camera, but it's true. All, all the people who were supposed to be in the house of God, all these children that God raised up in this house, we all happen to be in memories at the same time. Memories for the older people at the club. It's a nightclub. It was, it's, still, it's still activated? It's still there? I don't know. But it, it, it's a club. And we were all there at the same time. Guess who wasn't there? Now, what am I saying when I say that? There are some things that would tempt us that would not tempt you. Some of y'all need to leave a little early from the family union. Because y'all know the atmosphere changes at a certain time, don't it? Oh, I'm being real. Y'all can say amen to me on that. John can be there, maybe, I don't know. And it won't bother him at all. It brings back no memories. I'll be real in the house. And there's something that John cannot do, maybe he told me about it, that I can do because it ain't going to bother me. 
That's holiness, guys. When you listen to God's voice. Oh, y'all ain't heard me inside of here. Listen to God's voice say, you know, there's certain things that you can't have. But God said, no, you can't be around it because you'll be right back in the same thing. And we all want to say, I'm so strong. I'm so powerful. I'm this and I'm that. And God will show you what you really are. Ah, you got to understand that, that that takes a pressing when God puts things on you. You got to put on everybody else sometimes. Sometimes God will have you praying, nobody else praying. Amen. Sometimes God will have you fasting, ain't nobody else fasting right now. He's just dealing with you, amen? You have to understand that God has a purpose and that there will be some glory revealed in the midst of your obedience. That is the key to holiness. You have to be different enough to obey God. Obedience sets you apart. Obedience sanctifies you. Obedience makes you different. Obedience makes you holy. And the reason that is true is because a lot of people want blessings from God but don't want to be obedient to God. Uh, but the Holy Ghost is there to give you the power to be holy even when a part of you, even when every part of your flesh does not want to be holy. Even when, it, when the part of you, every part of your whole flesh does not want to be holy. The Holy Ghost says, no, no, you can still be holy. The Holy Ghost is the power to press when you don't feel like it. It is the power to press your way out of the crowd that wants to disobey God and do their own thing into a life that is submitted to God and the holiness that he desires from us. Because God desires holiness from all of us. Amen? From all of us. He, is, he requires me to be different. He requires me to be different. I don't care what everybody else in my job does. I don't care what my family does. He requires me to be different. So, so I'm, I'm going to get to this one because this is one that we don't want to hear. But God told me to preach. I'm going to preach what God told me to preach. Amen? Amen. We need to press our way out of laziness. I want to try my best to, 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 to paint it up and say slow for this and on this and on this. No, no, God said some of us need to press our way out of laziness. Now, some of us need to admit that we are lazy when it comes to our walk with God. We need to admit that. You know, when I was younger, my dad, I was working, and my, my dad was, he would just do odd jobs. We'd make signs, and we'd go build, we'd build a playhouse one time for somebody, a playground for somebody. We just, he just do odd jobs. And, and we would do it, and he would look, and he'd say, look what we're doing out here. He'd say, he look, we out here working, getting all dirty out here. Look what your daddy got to do for a living. He said, look inside, and we did one time for a, uh, an optician down there, a uh, shaper's optical down there in law. He said, look what they're doing inside there. He said, he 